Okay, so the, 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 the main reason why we're doing this is because we know absolutely nothing about cats. Okay. And we get a lot of questions from people about, you know, thinking about cruising. Should I buy a cat? Should I buy a monohull? And we've heard lots of things, but we really don't know anything. So thanks for like sitting down and talking to us about that today. Sure. We're going to ask you some questions. We've done our homework. We actually have a list. Well, maybe, of things. maybe we've done our work. Maybe. We'll see. We'll know pretty soon. Um, but the first thing is, like, tell us. So we're on Morning Glory. Tell us a little bit about her. Like, how long have you owned her and how many miles have you sailed her? We bought Morning Glory in September of 2008. Um, so we've had her for whatever that is, seven years now. And We've sailed from New York to here, to Madagascar, and by last count it's a little over 30,000 miles with up and down the east coast of the, of the U.S. a couple times, and in back and forth to New Zealand and stuff like that. That's a lot of sailing, so you guys know like definitely a little bit about how catamarans sail in the ocean, which is really what people are kind of interested in. Well, at least how Morning Glory sails on the yeah. ocean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it, the people you know, have asked this, some of these questions before, and I think that the hardest thing to answer, it's, it's just as hard as asking which monohull would you buy, or which, just which boat would you buy generally, because there's just a lot of personal questions involved. But um, and I, I suppose there are some key differences, though. So that's a good place to start, though, is what type of boat yeah, what, is Morning Glory? She's, I know she's a katana. Besides um, that, I don't know where they're designed or built or anything like that. They're designed and built in France. Um, they, they, the first Katana designs were... Um, I'm going to start stumbling and stuttering because I can't remember. What is it? Um, <laughs> really, really famous cat designer. And that was modified by a guy by the name of Christophe Barreau. So this, is, this came out of this earlier, more famous designer's general library and I'll think of it sooner or later but then it was modified by Christophe Barreau um, and I think most all of the Katana designs after around 98 or 99 have been designed by Christophe Barreau. It's designed as a performance catamaran. It's a perf it's designed as a world cruising boat first and foremost. That, that's the design basic design specification is a world cruising catamaran. And But with that in mind their idea of the appropriate boat for that is one that's pretty fast for her size and weight. So you'd consider her performance cat, dagger performance, boards, yeah. yes. all that good stuff? Yeah. yeah. How long is she? Uh, 43 okay. feet, 13 so four, meters. So 431 means like 43.1 feet or something, something like, that, that, something yeah. like that? And yeah. the beam? Is 24 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on Somewhere where you between 24 and a half uh, and 26. We need a 26 foot um, to haul her up, right? At least yes, at least the 26 foot travel mm -hmm. lift. Okay, so yeah. to put that in comparison with Delos, Delos is 16 meters, 53 feet, and 5 meter beam, so yeah. 16 feet. So you're a little bit shorter, but like Much wider. Three Much meters, wider. almost 3 meters wider, something like mm -hmm. that, 9 feet wider. Yeah. Arthur, you said you had a monohull before, so you have some really cool experience to like contrast the two, but what do you like about how this particular catamaran sails? Um, well, there's a couple things I like about the way she sails. One really doesn't have much to do with being a catamaran. Is it's just set up to work very easily. So all the lines are easy to get to when it's rough and when it's storming. You don't have to leave the cockpit to do anything. Um, it's easy to get the sails up. It's easy to reef them, mm -hmm. and it's easy to to see them when you're sailing it as well. So it's just she's an easy boat to sail, mm -hmm. and she sails pretty readily. It doesn't take a lot of wind to get her going. Because um, it's light. Because it's a pretty light boat. So how much does she weigh then? Um, I wish I knew the actual answer <laughs> to that. The, does, the, she's, they say she weighs about 8 to 10 tons. Okay. Um, but I think it's, but I think those specs don't really include any of the gear at all and I think she in real life weighs about 12 tons with everything loaded. She weighed a lot more than that when we first started yeah. cruising. I'd say she weighed an easy 16 tons, or f well, 14 tons, two tons more than she does now because we changed a lot of equipment on board. We're still fairly, yeah, we cut fairly back light boat. books, we cut back yeah. batteries. Because we're, I mean, that's almost like with our keel, we're like 28, 
28 tons or something like that. I want to say. So when you when you first started sailing her, she was she was <coughs> that heavy, 14, and now you think yeah. she's 12. And did you notice a performance oh, difference? Like huge. So yeah. like you were saying, you huge cut cut down on books yeah. or cut down. On yeah, we just or... we just took uh, you know extra spare parts, extra everything off. Yeah. Um, and we went from a house to a boat. So when, with two children. Yeah. on board a lot of crap so we just took it all off and anything we didn't really need and and it was it wasn't really hard you know it's more of a cruising of question than a sailing question in some respects i mean because that's more about just learning what you need and what you don't need and what you can live with and what you can live without and what's yeah. just right mm -hmm. it's just it's always a good idea i to guess the, the, <laughs> the difference is with with delos the performance doesn't decrease that much when you load her down you can really right. fill up with all kinds yes. of shit and it that's just a huge difference. it's okay we, we, we might lose yeah. like a quarter like when we put on a ton of fuel and water mm -hmm. we'll lose like why well, we you hardly even notice you know yeah well, we um, took off a ton in New Zealand when we changed from um, the gel batteries to lithium batteries and then we also got rid of just a bunch of crap and the, the difference we could tell. Not a ton, but it, maybe a thousand pounds. Yeah. yeah. And what were the what were the main differences you noticed? Like just the pointing response, higher or it, um, high it does point higher but that's you know the, the the difficulty with answering the pointing question is it has to do with leeway as much as it does your ability to point. Just because, like, if you ask someone, if, you know, how high do they point, they'll always say, "Well, we sail at thirty-five degrees to the apparent wind." Yeah. But when you watch their course on yeah, chart water, they, they it's entirely slip. different. And mm -hmm. so that's the real difference is if you're sailing at six degrees at thirty degrees apparent, six knots at thirty degrees apparent versus Eight knots at 30 degrees apparent, you're going to really just end up holding higher course because you don't have as much time for the leeway to, to move you sideways. We did notice a huge difference in speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that's true of a lot of catamarans, some more than others, is they are fairly weight sensitive. When we took all that weight off, for example, when we we would sail at five and a half to six knots on a beam reach in like 15 knots of breeze. Now we'll sail at eight and a half knots. Whoa. Wow, that's, that's a massive. huge yeah. difference. Mm -hmm. So very weight sensitive. She's, you know, she's really, really fast when the wind gets up. So if you get in the mm -hmm. 20s and you bear off, we'll do nine, 10, 11, 12 knots. Our fastest day is 240 miles in one 24 mm. hour period. And how's the, I guess it all depends on, on swell and stuff like that, but you were saying, you know, you said all catamarans they have waves that slap up underneath. Like, what's yeah. the what's the motion like? Especially coming from you, you've sailed on a monohull mm -hmm. before, and we kind of are used to you know leaning and it's good and it kind of gets in a rhythm or so we mm -hmm. think it does. And yeah, it's, it's it's really it is sort of apples and oranges. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't call one better than the other. Mm -hmm. They're right. just pretty different. The motion tends to be a little bit quicker, a little faster movement mm -hmm. side to side. Yeah. You lose your back. balance more because it's. But you don't get, but you don't, yeah. but you don't have big motions. Like you don't, right, you don't yeah, all of a sudden yeah. go over ten degrees mm -hmm. because of a wave and, and a gust at the same time. Um, Ninety percent of the time, we could have a glass on the table. Yeah. Ninety percent. Um, That's of, quite of a lot. Cruising and on the ocean, on passage, yeah. On passage. Um, but then there's the times where it's so rough you can't have any. Everything just flies everywhere. Yeah. So, so is is there like a fine line breaking point where it's like. All right, anything can be out, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, yeah. put everything away. It depends away. a lot on sea state, right? It's, yeah. it's less, you know how that is. It's you know if you get if you're if you've got a cross swell, like you've got seas from behind, and then you've got mm -hmm. a big swell coming out of Antarctica someplace that's yeah. you know three four meters on the side. Even if it's long, you get the extra twisting, and mm -hmm. and now and then the two will combine into the one that just pops you, whether it's on the side of your boat or it's under yeah. our bridge deck, and you know you get the bang and the slam mm -hmm. and. And it's the same thing for all of us. It's yeah, just, yeah, that's, that's you probably different. have waves that bang on your yeah, definitely. side. We'll we'll get the bang, and sometimes the table will just you know jump, jump, yeah, <laughs> and, oh, and sure. everything and on it just flies. Launch, yeah, but it's a launch. And what's also really bad is wake. If we're if if a huge if we're at an anchorage somewhere and a big cargo ship goes by and leaves a giant wake, things will just because we don't we're not used to putting things away. Right. So if we have all sorts of things out and they'll. Fallen. Well, especially between a performance catamaran and a, like a full keeled oh, yeah. monohull. Full keeled monohull sits way down heavy in the water and it goes through the water. 
Yeah. We go over the top of the water. We don't sail in the water, we sail on top of the water. So when there's a steep wake that comes by, it goes right up and down over that wake like this, whereas a, with a big heavy boat that's sitting in it, it, it'll feel it and it'll get moved. But, yeah, but, it'll but it doesn't go up and it. down over yeah. each wave. We go up and down over each wave. Yeah, I've noticed the last two days in the anchorage, it's you know the motion's been a little bit weird coming in. I've been watching you guys kind of like, you don't, like we'll go like this, we'll but you'll be like a little, Yeah. But it's less movement, but it's a little but quicker, it's and a little, still. little jerky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's um, yeah, it's really hard to compare. I mean, there are heavier catamarans, and then there's lighter monohulls mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, yeah. You know. And I guess like like when we were talking to to Martin on the wild one, he uh, you guys haven't mm -hmm. known enough, but he so his his boat is kind of considered a performance catamaran, but there's no dagger boards, so it's it's a bit deeper of a draft, but it's still very very light. So this mm -hmm. would be like the dagger boards, how how big of a role do they play? And yeah. they play a really big yeah, role. If we, we have the dagger, dagger boards, boards a lot. if we have the dagger boards all the way down, you tend to put them down depending on wind speed and and sea angle, state and, angle yeah. or and, and angle wind angle and wind angle mm -hmm. too. So when we bear off, we raise them up when we're going hard on the wind. We have them fully down unless the wind's really high, yeah, the wind's because really you might want some them. lateral movement to absorb wind and waves. So you learn some tricks about. About, you know things like that absorbing mm -hmm. the wind and the waves in a way that just yeah. doesn't stress you and stress the boat so if the boat can move with it it's less stress on everything right yeah, yeah. and if the dagger boards are all the way down you're just you're on rails sort mm -hmm. of and she points a lot higher we, we yeah, can we, we can sail through we can tack actual course over ground less than 90 degrees and I think it's pretty hard to find really a good. lot of yeah. monohulls that do that yeah. You yeah. will find any performance monohull can do that, but, yeah, cru yeah. but cruising boats don't tend to. Um, yeah. If you have mini keels, you have something that's easier to beach. We can't really beach our boat with, with that. So yeah, that was the, the, the next we, question. What's the draft difference with with the, the draft boards yeah, versus... Board? Yeah. It's not so much different because what, the rudders are still the same size. Yeah, but he wants to know how deep, no, how, like the, how deep can we be. We're yeah. seven and a half, eight feet. I forget. It's okay. It's a little over two meters when when the boards are fully when they're fully yeah. down, fully and down. when they're up, the hull, the bottom of the hulls is less than two feet. I think it's twenty-two inches or something. Like yeah, that. I think like Brian and I were talking about a big thing with catamarans. At least when we first were talking, like about getting catamarans, or they're like, oh, you can just go as shallow as you want. You know, you, that's like a big plus. But in reality, it's only if it's only about a meter or less difference of a draft from a monohull to a cat. It's kind of like you still want to anchor in at least four meters of water, I guess. It's no, like, no, we anchor and we've anchored with like you know. <laughs> so yeah, there's, we've there's, there's, there's the exception to the. <laughs> we we use the dagger boards as curb feelers. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, with the the rudders. Hit the like bottom and then raise them up a little <laughs> yeah. bit and then go in a little further. Um, we have actually done that, but the <laughs> <laughs> but you're saying you can't beach her because the we rudders can't. are deeper than the than yeah. The we holes. just because you wouldn't yes. want to dry out on the rudder shafts. Yeah, it, um, yeah. it's just too much pressure. Or the sail drives either. We wouldn't want to hit the sail drives on something hard. But right. we, I love going into a shallow anchorage because you don't have swell, you don't have yeah. chop, and you don't have to have mm -hmm. as much anchor chain out, which is you know less work on your windlass and your batteries and all that. And it's just it's nice. So we. We'll frequently anchor in in six feet, two meters. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, all the time, whenever we can. Uh, yeah, we'd love to do that. It'd be a ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a bit a bit more word as well, because if the tide drops out, we'll we'll yeah. you know it drop. <laughs> we'll we'll heel yeah. over on something, but you guys yeah, might well, just, yeah, obviously have to pay know, attention. It's to not the tide, good, so. but <laughs> you guys would easily just sit. Yeah. <laughs> so when you guys are pointing up when with your dagger boards bound, like you can make like forty degrees apparent. Like 45 or 35 one? apparent. That's really good. 35 apparent, and then the course over ground is probably around 45, something like that. Okay. But so I think our course over ground is really, we don't really lose a yeah, whole lot. Much. So when we never really mean, consider it. We really 40 with our new sails, you know, but we, low no. 40s, and we. There's, just there's just a, go a speed where the drop off, too, because if we're sailing at 35 apparent, we're, we're probably doing five and a half to six knots mm. um, where in the same wind we might bear off to 45 50 apparent and we'll go right up to eight or nine yeah yeah, big difference you saw that on yeah yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but at the same but you can make the progress solidly yeah, it doesn't feel make. like you're stalling the sails are still mm -hmm. full yeah uh, that's cool so the, the other big question that we've gotten a lot is about safety 
right? Because people here is like, ah, oh, you know, when Delos gets a big puff of wind, we can feel it. And, you know, she's like a pressure release mm -hmm. valve and she comes over and then she comes back and we reef when we're, we start to heal and we're like, okay, we're healing a lot. Let's reef. We'll go a little bit faster. The boat will be a little bit more under control. How do you guys do it? Do you do it by the numbers? By the numbers. By the numbers. So yeah, you have absolutely. like set wind speeds, like yeah. true wind speed or apparent well, speed. And we especially, she's right. That we, we especially learned to do it by the yeah. numbers. The boat came with a, a, a reefing guide that suggested what you should have out for conditions right up to, you know, force 10 plus and uh, we followed that pretty religiously, and there's there's room in it, in it for for change a little bit, and also depending on how you cut your sails too. Like if you've got bigger or smaller sails than they were originally on there, yeah. we've got a big main. But we have also learned to feel things because you don't. You're right. You don't feel the heel, and um, you do. You do start feeling a no, little you, tiny. Yeah, but you don't really feel the heel. The thing we notice most is just extra the motion because there's more too. energy. She feels really you like feel right. power, powered you up. Really she feels loaded and like yeah, just, it just a little wiggly, a little squirrely. It's kind of hard to yeah, put your really finger on it. Like you feel motion in there. There is a little bit of heel, but it's more the extra motion to me at least than it is the the tilting. Because yeah. we don't. I can tell from in here that it's time to reef. Yeah. Just by the feeling yeah. of whatever yeah. it is. But it's Water not as obvious. You have to because get more the energy the instead yeah, of the yeah. heel. It's, it's different with every boat. Instead yeah. of a heel, you're going yeah. forward. And and then you get more um, weather. It takes a lot to dump them over, though. It takes so what, a what, lot. So, do you think that that's possible in a catamaran of this design, or do you think there's enough like conservative safety? More waves like, that would do it. Would right? the, would the rig break or the sails blow out before that would I, happen? I, I, or? I honestly don't know the answer to that because I've heard people say that you'd have to have a sea state in combination to it at the same time. I know of, I don't, I don't personally know of any katanas that have flipped over, but I would bet there probably is one someplace. Yeah. I do know of a Chris White 55 that went upside down crossing the Pacific the year before we do, and they got hit with a 60 plus knot squall with everything up so there wasn't sea state in that but i think they just got hit broadside with absolutely everything up I think, yeah yeah so we we you know when we see storms or squalls coming we yeah. always we tend to either reef yeah. or even drop it beforehand until we know what kind of energy is in the storm and then we has it ever all these crossed miles your mind you know. like oh shit or not even no mm -hmm. no no. So just conservative, really. Just yes. we, we yeah. play we're very conservative. We, we play it conservative. It sails better when we reef. It's yeah. Yeah, it's a funny thing about it is when we, we reef, we faster. often speed up. It often speeds mm -hmm. up after yeah. we reef, yeah. mm -hmm. which is fine. But it's really, really hard to flip them. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you'll hear from marketing people about, you know, the number of monohulls that sink versus catamarans that flip, and you can't, you mm -hmm. can't recommend cruising generally without, you know, thinking about and knowing about the risks that are out there, but I think it's pretty small. It just, it just doesn't really happen very often. Yeah. And I think it's, uh, that's the biggest question, I think, on people's minds is, will she flip and how do you prevent her from flipping, really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But and one with thing any though, other boat, will she sink and how do you prevent her from sinking? Yeah. 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 Exactly. But one thing, though, I mean, if it's we possible. flip, with this particular boat, if we flip, we will still be in the water, we'll still be floating. Yeah. It's yeah. And with, with Katanas, they, they are positive. Not every catamaran is, so you can't say yeah. this generally about catamarans, but this boat is positively buoyant. It's an entire foam core construction. There's no lead on the boat. The heaviest things would be the engines. And it's been tested by Katana. Katana's tried to sink them to see whether or not they are positively buoyant. It's written right in the mm -hmm. documentation. So they should they just definitely. float. They'll, Even they'll if float. you fill them with water, yep. like we fill our dinghy with water, she should. Yes. We always say that the float. you know the, that the life raft is there for fires, not for yeah. sinking. That's a good point. Yeah, that's great. So. Okay, so in like Delos and heavy weather, if things got really bad, our go-to plan is like we just heave to, you know, put up our storm jib, back wind it, a little bit of mizzen, bring the bow up, and it gets, we've only done it for practice, but it does have a real comfortable motion. What would you guys do in a catamaran? Would well, you, you, can, run, you, you can do the exact same thing, and some cats will heave to better than others. For example, on our trip from the Seychelles to Madagascar, we had a pretty, it was a windward trip the whole way. We were sailing above 60 degrees the wind for the entire trip and you know in a couple meter swell and we had only two or three squalls but one of them was well two of them were in the mid 30s and we had more sail up than we would want in the mid 30s so the first thing we did is just nose up into the wind a little bit and sat there for an hour and 
because our boat does that pretty well, so it doesn't take much maintenance. All we do is just dial the autopilot up a little bit higher, and now we're now we're going one to two knots, just yeah. a little bit off the wind, essentially hove to. And you can do the same thing as any other boat with backwinding the jib or not. Some catamarans I know just roll up their jib or drop it and just leave center the main and just leave it like that it's like because it drives the stern around and it just holds you into the wind yeah. so you can do that. But we have a, a drogue and a parachute in case if things get it. If things get much really bad we, we would we would first we would run off without doing anything we just go with the wind as long as there's room. Mm -hmm. If it's ugly in those conditions we've got two different um, stern drogues, a Jordan series drogue and a Gale Rider drogue that we could fool around with to see which we like better. And we have bridle systems set up so that we can do that. And we also, we tend to view it more as a last resort, but we mm -hmm. also have a parachute anchor so that we could fly off the bow and just hold the bow into, and that would be more yeah. if there was a... a like a um, serious storm. If there was a lee shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They needed to keep your mm -hmm. sea room. So you'd, you'd run with it, and I guess the, the, the thing with breaching is like when you know, when as far as a catamaran, is it more is it more likely to breach at a certain point, or she doesn't? They don't. No, no. They just they just mm -hmm. they, they're they, they, there's a something in their literature that they call form stability at speed. So they it it becomes more stable and easier to control the faster she goes. Mm -hmm. Right. So it it they just sort of pop up and there, there's you raise the dagger boards yes. so that you don't have. Any, yeah, true. Anything you else is driving you. Yeah, so you the can only slide thing off that's the in the water essentially is your rudders, which are the furthest thing aft, and the wind's blowing the bows off, and you just yep. go. And um, I hope we're never really in conditions like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah of get, course. Especially with kids on board and everything, we were very conservative. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I think to, the best thing about cruising, whether it's a cat or a monohull these days, is just that weather forecasting has gotten pretty good. It's by not me. It's by no means perfect. Yeah. And you can make mistakes, but if you're conscientious, you can avoid a lot of this nonsense. We got stuck in a, yeah. a storm our first trip out that was <laughs> in 40 yeah. knot plus winds for two days straight, so the seas had time to get really huge. And it was off the um, Gulf. And we sailed through the whole thing. We had a triple reef main and part of the jib out, and we just rocketed along for two yeah. days. Yeah. And, um, we never at what kind of wind angle were you at? Um, we were at about like 120. Yeah, sweet. We, we changed 120 our to 160, we and yeah. we did that. We we bore off because we yeah. we didn't want to hold the course that we that we wanted to hold. So we did that to make it more comfortable. But we I I would say we never felt unsafe in it in that kind of weather. It's great. Don't recommend. And what kind of like what sea conditions? Are, Four meters, five meters. Well, three it, meters. over that time, it built up so that I'd say that the average sea was probably five meters. Yeah, and, and then you have the road. and then you have you have the ones rolling through at six, seven, eight meters. But I'd say the average sea was probably five. I'm yeah. still happy that night when the sun went down and you didn't see the giant waves coming. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. You can hear them, but you yeah. can't see them. I don't like it. I'd rather see them during the day because at night you get oh, the robes. Oh, you just put the just trust just... in the boat at that point. Yeah. But that was also we yeah. were new, pretty new then. Yeah, you know? true. What does it taste like me? Ew. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's start this interview. What kind of a bloat is this? <laughs> no. The best thing's about two hulls is. <laughs> Okay. How does that look, Brady? It's real good. There, see that shutter. It's all red. Alright, let her, let her rip. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha